Welcome to the second part of the IC3D point editing training video. In part one, we created two meshes that will be a part of a complete model. Select both previously created models and launch into the point editor window. Located in the top right under the editing options, we have the option to change the color of our models. When dealing with numerous models, this comes in handy for organization. Now we must weld the handle to the base mesh to let interior and fill create a fill for the handle, allowing the liquid to be visible. Align the handle to the top and pull the bottom vertices over so that they're flush with the side of the base. The goal here is to match the geometry of the actual bottle so that there are no seams or gaps present between the two, as afterwards we'll be combining the two meshes. Using the Select Faces tool, delete the faces that will be against the other mesh so we can create a gap. This will make welding the seams together a much simpler process. For the base, we'll do the same as for the top and pull the points flush. Switching to the side view, we'll add a bit more transition to the point where the handle meets the base. When pulling these points down, always remember that you should try to keep your model symmetrical on both sides. Sometimes when highlighting vertices, the vertices behind them will be selected as well. To avoid this, you can check Ignore Back Faces under Selection tab. This will allow you to highlight only the visible points while ignoring those behind. Using the Scale tool on two selected points, we'll scale them away or closer to each other. This is used a lot to achieve the required symmetry. Now that the handle is in place, we'll switch over to the base mesh. If the color of your model makes it difficult to see the vertices, you can change its color with the small color box in the Editing Options tab. Within this mesh, we must now create a seam line where we can weld our handle to the mesh. To do this, we simply delete the faces that cut through our handle and rotate any edges that need to be flipped. To turn an edge, simply click the Turn Edge tool within the Vertex Tools tab and select the edge you want to turn. Go back into the handle and match the vertices of the handle with the vertices of the base mesh. This will make welding our model together much simpler. We can also fill in large gaps between vertices. So using best judgment, you can choose to leave some gaps for new faces to be created. Here, we'll leave the large gaps between the inside base of the handle and where it connects to the base mesh. Now that our vertices are lined up, we'll merge the two shapes together. Under Vertex Tools, click Attach. A window will appear listing the models you currently have in the scene. Check the two models we have been working on and select OK. This will merge the two models together, allowing you to edit the vertices of each within the same model. Make adjustments where you see fit. Start to weld the model together by selecting two vertices that are on top of each other and click the Weld button under the Vertex Tools tab. You can also set the distance that the weld will take, allowing you to weld points together that are much further away. This option will put the newly made point in the center of the two selected points. We want to weld all the points of contact that the models share. The gaps at the base of the handle can now be addressed using the Create Face tool under the Vertex Tools tab. Within the Create Face tool, you can select up to three or four points to be bridged between. Noting that you must always create your face by selecting your points in a counterclockwise fashion so that your normals are correct. 
Now we'll seal up the gaps between our base using the Create Face tool. Now that our model's base has been sealed and bridged, we'll move on to the cap. Within the 2D Spinner template, let's import our reference photo used in part one of this video sequence. Make sure to set the same image dimensions as before so your model size is consistent. Move the points to the cap's position. When adding our points, make sure to add additional points to the model so that they can be used later for the Pushed In tab. Once done, add the model to the scene. Move the cap to the top of the bottle using the Move Transformation tool. Moving to Point Editor with our cap, push the points on the top in using the Soft Selection tool under the Selection tab. This tool selects a spread area of points, allowing you to contour items quickly. We just need to move some of the outer points and align them to our pushed in area. Apply your interior and fill, materials, and artwork. Then render to finish. You now have the tools and knowledge to create your own complex models within IC3D. This concludes the IC3D Point Editor Part 2 training video.